Hey folks, welcome to Terry and Frank Live. I uh, hope you're tuning in because you're excited about the human factors of leadership. We're going to have a number of different episodes or series within the Terry and Frank show. So this is the first one. We'll probably do belonging. We'll probably do people unproductive. It's going to be fun. Uh, this is a long series, The Human Factors. It's everything in this digital era where people are the most important tool in every company. Understanding the science and biology of why humans behave and do what they do is super important because you must unlock the time, talent, and energy of your folks. Hi, I'm Frank Wander. I'm the founder of People Productive. With me, I have my co-host, Terry Mays. Hello, Terry, everybody. Hello. I am Terry Mays. I'm a certified culture engineer that helps companies focus on the human side of business to bring increased value to their organizations. And Terry is a super certified culture engineer. She gets it deeply. And, you know, People Productive exists to help people in the companies they work for thrive together. That's everything. That's all about avoiding the great resignation, keeping people, you know, building an agile human infrastructure, everything you need to do in this current era. So uh, today we're going to really talk about kind of the biological roots of fairness and equality. I don't think anything could really be more important than that. Uh, when you get down to it, fairness and equality, lack of fairness and equality exists at level two of Maslow. If you tune in and start following our series and join us live and ask some questions, hopefully, um, you will begin to see that, you know, fairness and equality, you know, and the Maslow hierarchy really matter in terms of understanding how effectively the human infrastructure is operating for you. And why don't we, Tara, what do you think? Should we start with that video? I think we should. The video is a really good example. <laughs> it really has a very funny scene <laughs> that I think you'll enjoy, but it really gives a great example of just fairness and equality at work. And why it matters. So, uh, hey, Marcel, could you key that up? Thanks, buddy. I've never done the task is thinking that maybe they would have a stronger reaction and that turned out to be right. The one on the left is the monkey who gets cucumber. The one on the right is the one who gets grapes. The one who gets cucumber, note that the first piece of cucumber is perfectly fine. The first piece he eats. Uh, then she sees the other one getting grape and you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us, that's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. <laughs> I love that. She tests the rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. <laughs> so this is basically the Wall Street protest that you see here. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's a great piece, right? And yes. that... That capuchin monkey who has been treated is being treated unfairly is no different than a human. This is a social animal, just like humans. Fairness and equality matter to survival. So humans are wired for this. This is the biological roots. This is why there's protests in the street when there's lack of equality. There's revolutions when people are protesting. He laughs at the end about the Wall Street protests. But Tara, I mean, what matters more? Leaders must understand this stuff is super important. It's biology. Yes, it absolutely can make or break your organization. When people start to feel like they're not being treated fairly or that there's no sense of equity, it really creates a psychologically unsafe environment for people. And when they feel psychologically unsafe, they're looking for a way of escape. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times people won't necessarily come to you and say that this is why they're leaving the company. But a lot of times that is it. That is exactly why people leave companies, because they feel that they're not being equally treated and equally paid based on the work that they're doing. 
So just like the monkeys knew in the innately, nobody had to teach that to the monkeys. They understood that if I do the work that you're asking me to do, I should get the same pay as the person next to me. Perfect. And once that, once that doesn't happen, you saw that monkey reach his arm out. He's like banging on the desk, like, wait a minute. And that's exactly what people do in the workplace. Oh, they are having all of these passive aggression aggressive behaviors and they're kind of internally coming up with their own thoughts and they're plotting their escape because they feel mm -hmm. that they're not being treated fairly or as equal as their peers that are making the same doing the same job but they're making more than them when people feel that inequity they will start to rebel they will start to protest and make it loud you know they're not going to be quiet about it and eventually people leave the company because they just feel like they're not being treated fairly you know this is a survival mechanism <clears throat> and humans and social organisms are wired for this people need to be treated fairly and like terry said the two Capuchin monkeys performed the task. They did. They were at. They were asked. They did it the same way. And no one taught that monkey about fairness. And your people, they notice what's going on. You know, the human, the limbic system. Ninety percent of the limbic system, which is a seat of human emotion, is wired for survival. This is part of that survival wiring. It's there. You know, this environment's always being scanned for threats and risks. It's a threat to their survival. Ultimately. Yes. Um, so their mood's going to drop way down. You're going to get real low level output from these people. So you're destroying the productivity and fabric of your organization. If you're a leader, you've got to be aware of how you're operating, right? People need to trust the organization. This is organizational trust. And if I'm here, this organization will treat me fairly. And that's the leaders and how they treat the people. And if the person thinks they're being treated unfairly and you don't, their perception is what drives their emotion and their behavior. So you've got to look into it and you've got to find out what it is. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but you've got to deal with it. And you should be always in tune with whether what you're doing is being perceived as fair or unfair. You've got to be fair, you've got to act with integrity, you've got to treat people the same for the same work. And that's just the bottom line. Yes, you make a great point about that perception. It's the person's perception of how they're being treated that mm -hmm. determines everything about how they respond and how they feel about what's happening. And we're talking a lot about feelings, but it's really important. You know, we feel like um, feelings have no work, no place in the workplace, but that's just not correct. People yeah, right. are human beings and we have feelings. That's just part of who we are. So we hear a lot of conversation these days about employee engagement and why aren't our people more engaged? This is one of those reasons why people are not engaged. When they start to feel like they're not being treated fairly, they're not making the same um, things as, or pay or benefits or whatever it is, they're not getting the same as their peer, they start to disengage. So this is absolutely one of the primary reasons that people disengage from the company and they stop bringing their whole self to work and they feel like if you're going to pay me less then i'm going to give you less and they just continue that cycle and it's a less and less and less and less until you're almost getting nothing from that person mm -hmm. because they feel like you know i've really been taken advantage of and so i'm not going to continue to contribute to this company if i'm not going to be fairly paid or treated the way that I should. So that is absolutely a perception from that person. And you want as a leader to make sure that the actions that you're taking, whether it's through um, promotions and raises, that whatever actions you're taking, that you're being fair in how you do that. that you don't have picks and chooses and favorites where um, you know your buddies get all the best raises mm -hmm. and benefits, but the people that you don't know as well don't get anything. You know, that people notice that. You may think that nobody notices it, but people notice it. They see how they you're responding everything. to your friends and your, you know, the ones that are your buddy buddies. You know, people notice that. So make sure you don't have favorites that, and that's not to say that you can't have friends in the workplace, but you cannot treat your friends better than you treat everybody else. You can't have those exactly. people that, are your favorites and then everybody else just gets what's left over. You really do have to treat people fairly and equally 
across the board, no matter what. Yeah. And remember, as a leader, humans are the most powerful sensor in that workplace. I don't care what technology equipment you have sensing things. Humans sense so much stuff. Matter of fact, 98% of what they're sensing, they're throwing away. They're incredibly sensitive to everything going on in the environment. And that is absolutely core to the survival of them as an organism. And, you know, fairness and equality isn't really just about money. It's, you know, who gets what assignments, uh, who gets called up and recognized after a project. You have 10 people who worked really hard. They all contributed. Somebody decides they're going to call two people up and, you know, recognize them. You know, the other people are going to feel they're being treated unfairly. And you've got to be very aware and sensitive to that. There are many forms of uh, inequality that can take place in a workplace, and people are going to tune into all of them. And because you didn't pay attention to how much work everybody was doing, and you have to just notice these two, that's no excuse. You've got to really dig in and understand who contributed, who deserves to be recognized, make sure they all get recognized. And if somebody isn't going to get recognized, it shouldn't be a surprise to them. Right. You should be having conversations with them all along. Right. As a leader, you own that culture in the room. You own making sure that people are being treated fairly. And, you know, there are always times where there are things that happen that we have no control over. But a lot of times it's just a matter of communication. If you accurately and adequately communicate with people, a lot of times people understand. Right. So they're we're not just unreasonable. Most times people are not just completely unreasonable. They really will understand if you communicate with them, if you share that feedback in advance instead of, you know, just waiting until the end of the year to give that feedback. Give feedback along the way so that people know and they don't get those surprises at the end of the year. They don't get surprises at the end of the project to find that, oh, I didn't perform the way that they wanted me to perform. You know, that's not the way you want to do it. So that now they're getting, they're not getting that bonus or they're not getting that pay raise that they expected. You want to make sure that you're treating people the way you want to be treated. You know, and I can go back to that golden rule and I'm a Southern girl. So a lot of the way that I think has been shaped by being raised in the mm-hmm. South. And, but one of those things that has just stuck with me is treat people the way you want to be treated. So if it were you on the receiving end of that decision, Mm -hmm. how would you feel? How would you want somebody to communicate that change to you? And that's how you should do it for other people. Don't be so removed from your people and so out of touch with how they're feeling that you forget that they are humans and people's livelihood is at stake. You know, people are, their whole family is depending on them. Their to self-esteem. Their self-esteem. Yes. yes. So you want to be very careful with how you treat people in the workplace because it'll come back and bite you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, make sure you tune in for this weekly episode. We're going to cover science. What is the science behind the human factors leadership? How do you actually lead to build an incredibly inclusive culture? What do you have to do to create an environment with the time, talent, and energy of all the people is used? Because you understand these human factors are tools that great leaders employ to develop absolutely great cultures that are highly productive and win in the marketplace. Because that's what this is about. This is about all the creating a place where the people and company thrive together. You got to win everybody's got to contribute. They've all got to be involved. Um, We're going to have a science topic every week. Please put this on your calendar, three o'clock Eastern, every Wednesday afternoon. We will be live. We'd love to get some comments and questions from you. Uh, This is our first live episode, so we'll be really pushing and promoting this and getting this out to everybody. So we look forward to having you join us. Yes. And other thoughts, Tara? Yes, we do have some key takeaways. Um, Marcelo, if you could bring up that slide. We have some things that we really wanted you to focus on as you're thinking about this topic of fairness and equality. Um, These are not aspirational goals. And this is a quote from Frank, but it's so true that fairness and equality are not aspirational goals. They're not just things that you aspire to have. They are deeply rooted human needs that you absolutely must have. It's absolutely required for people to be fully engaged at work. 100%. There is no question about it. You have to make sure that people are being treated fairly 
and that mm-hmm. they are receiving that equal treatment for e- equal payment for equal pro- products or output. I'm sorry, <laughs> equal pay for equal output. You want to make sure that people don't have that sense that they're being mistreated or slighted in any way, because that will cause them to start to retreat and they mm-hmm. will not be fully engaged. Um, they have to feel like they're getting that right and proper compensation. No matter what's happening, you're always treating them fairly. You're always compensating them based on the output that they're given, not because of their personal beliefs, their gender, yep. their race, their background, all the other things that can cause you to want to be um, different. You have to really make sure that you're being fair and equal in your treatment. Mm-hmm. And this is something that's universal. Those um, that need for fairness and equality we saw existed with the monkeys. It exists across the board. It's not just for um, humans, but it's across the board. Everybody is wired that way. So think of it and anticipate those areas where people may feel some type of inequality and then do your very best to correct it. Um, There's some really um, horrible things that happen with toxicity at work when you start to create these unfair and unequal environments. It creates a toxic workplace. The um, fairness and equality- Which we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover all the forms of toxicity that drive people down to level two of Maslow, create disengagement and departure. Yes, but really you wanna focus in on fairness and equality Mm -hmm. because they drive they're a driver of a non-toxic work environment. So people start to feel like they are in an environment that's healthy, where they're accepted, they belong. And Frank is right, we're gonna talk about some of these things, but being fair and treating people equally is one of the major ways that you can ensure that the environment is not toxic. And that you also build some trust with people. You wanna make Mm -hmm. sure that people can trust the organization and that you can trust your people. It's a two-way street. So make sure that you're um, really considering those things as some good key takeaways and really thinking about how you can improve as a leader and how you can help your organization thrive. Terry, great job summarizing. That was excellent. Thank so you. um yeah, we're uh, we're excited to have you join us. You know, the the type of learning that's going to take place is very important. You know, everybody spent their life in school. They were taught to think. They were not taught to feel. A lot of this is about human emotions and feelings. So we're going to go into this in great detail. You understand the biology and science behind it. It's not just an optional thing. This is absolutely mandatory as a leader that you know this. You must know how to use the equipment you've been given. In this case, absolutely people. There's a human infrastructure. You've got to make it work great. That's the key to success in the digital era where people are the most important tool in every company. Yes. So um, I guess we'll wrap up here, Tara, and uh, yes. hopefully we'll see you next week, three o'clock Eastern. Yes. Thank you for joining time. us. Thank you. Have a good one.